Hey guys, Meet Ronald Chris Tomer here on this Tuesday. Let's talk some mountain weather, and I first want to go to radar and look at it across the west. Now, the flow is starting to shift. We have three storm systems lined up. What you're seeing here is just sort of the very leading edge of the first storm system. You can see this wave of precip coming in on this sort of west-southwest flow. So the jet is bringing in quite a bit of moisture and starting to line things up here uh, for the west. Now, freezing levels today will come down a notch in the Pacific Northwest. I'll point those out here in a second, probably somewhere between four and 6,000 feet, and then a more significant drop in that freezing level tomorrow. We'll talk more about that coming up. So what that means is now we're gonna start to push snow down to lower and lower elevations, which is exactly what we need after this very difficult stretch for a lot of the west, the Pacific Northwest um, in general. Let me give you the big picture here. So here's satellite, this is water vapor, and you're looking at uh, moisture or water vapor in the mid-levels of the atmosphere. And so here is the flow. You can see it coming in, the whites and the blues. So we've got uh, one area of low pressure here, and then there are other areas of uh, energy riding this jet in the future. But all that's pointed at the Pacific Northwest right now, but even a little bit of precip coming into Northern California, definitely a sign of things changing across the West. Let me take you to my bullet points, give you some of the specifics. All right, so three different storms, we've talked about that through 1223, we'll say. Now in the Pacific Northwest, the rain snow line has been running uh, seven to 10,000 feet for the past several days. Now it's going to start to come down somewhere between four and 6,000 feet today. It'll oscillate. Bigger drop with that freezing level rain snow line tomorrow, all the way down to 3,000 feet tomorrow. That's exciting. That's really exciting. Now, looking at areas further inland, the interior Rockies, still looking at seven to 8,000 foot rain snow line freezing levels, so still pretty warm through the interior today, but even those freezing level rain snow lines are all gonna start to drop through Idaho, Montana. All of those places will see, Wyoming, will see the effects of this colder air in the coming days as colder air slowly filters in. Here's your timeline. Best odds of accumulating snow in Colorado, Tahoe, Utah, Idaho, Wyoming, Montana, and interior BC. So for example, in Colorado, you've got light to moderate snow coming in tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow night. And then you've got light 1218, light to moderate 1220. In Utah, it has been a terrible waiting game. You've got light to moderate afternoon, evening 1217, light 1218 afternoon, light 1220, and then light to moderate 1221. Um, looking at Montana, Wyoming, Idaho, a lot of moisture headed your way. And there is going to be some significant snow accumulation, definitely um, some of my biggest snow bullseyes are up there through the Tetons, through parts of Montana, uh, Idaho, interior BC, the Pacific Northwest. Um, let me show you the forecast radar. So we'll start this out at uh, 11 a.m. Mountain Standard today, Tuesday, December 16th. So there's your leading edge of, we'll just call it storm number one. Let me push this into the future. All right, so there's 5 p.m. Mountain Standard. Got all that precip in Northern California for a change. Uh, 10 p.m. All right, let's move into, this is 5 a.m. Mountain Standard on Wednesday, December 17th. Now look at that leading edge. It's hitting the Tetons. It's hitting extreme Northern uh, Utah. You've got it, a lot of heavy precip. Look at those yellow returns there. Um, that's a much more intense level of precipitation there. California. Again, this is all associated with storm number one. All right, there we are, 11 a.m., and even a little bit of that making it into the central and northern mountains of Colorado, so we're gonna see some light to moderate accumulations with that. 16, late 16 into 17. Um, here we are, there's 5 p.m. Mountain Standard. So this is effectively, there's your wave with storm number one kind of riding its way through the Rockies, and that may mark the end of storm one as it goes on out. And you can see everything starts to curtail with Storm, one, storm number one. Here's 5 a.m. Thursday, December 18th. Now here comes storm number two. You see the wave out here. So there's storm number two starting to make its way in. Let's see what else we got here. There's 11 a.m. New snow for the Tetons, Idaho, Montana. Heavy precip through the Pacific Northwest. And a lot of that is gonna be snow because remember by this point, we're looking at much lower rain snow lines, heavy snow. 
There's 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Thursday. Um, all right, we'll stop it right here. This is 11 a.m. Mountain Standard Friday, December 19th. This is all associated with storm number two. Uh, and you've got snow falling through the Tetons, Idaho, Montana, um, all the way through the Pacific Northwest. That should be a good batch. And remember, there's also a third storm behind this one as well. All right, let's look at the... Um, and you know what? Let's look at... Let's do a time height. This is Loveland Ski Area. Slice through the atmosphere, looking at all the vertical layers. It's a three-day forecast starting right here, and you move in this direction into the future. So for Loveland, I see a couple of things I want to point out. Very dry initially, currently, with those dry colors. And then the green starts to increase. There's one, one little uh, surge there, and then there's another surge right there. Um, and there's a heck of a lot of wind. I mean, look at... Look at this fold, this pressure fold right here. Um, looking at, look at the wind barbs, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 mile an hour winds coming in. So between the 16th and the 17th, very strong winds. So basically this afternoon, tonight, tomorrow, we're gonna get a surge of wind coming through Colorado, especially the front range high peaks of probably gusts to 90. I'm seeing that right here. And, and that's going to squeeze out some snow. Loveland, A Basin, Summit County, Winter Park, Longs Peak, Eldora, Steamboat. We'll probably get some snow out of this and out of this. And we could be looking, I'm just eyeballing it, two to six inches of snow based on that kind of lift and the lift coming in with the second one. All right, here we go. Let's look at the pressure anomalies. Up at a, about 18,000 feet in the atmosphere. So here's your battleground, there's your storm track. This is effective 1217 Wednesday. So I mentioned the high winds. We're going to see those in Colorado, probably Wyoming as well, just based on these pressure lines. Um, and there's your area of low pressure. There are the higher pressures down here. So um, overall with this pattern, you, you want to be on this line in north to get the best action, to get the best cold air, to get the best snow accumulation. South of it, southern Utah, southern Colorado, New Mexico, Arizona, don't want to be there. Not going to see as much of anything, and maybe not anything. Here's the battleground. There's your pressure uh, anomalies on Saturday, 1220. Uh, so right in here, uh, you'll want to be on that line in north. Um, let's go. This is actually Christmas, the morning of Christmas. And on this, we've got the big pressure drops all west of that line, west and northwest, with higher pressures here. Um, let me show you the contrast. We've been doing this every day. So there's your AI interpretation of what Christmas is going to look like. And I, I don't like this. That high pressure anomaly is significant on the AI. Operation, like I just showed you, actually is more optimistic for snow and colder air across a lot of the west. I'd much rather would see this versus the AI. So we'll look at that each day. Let's look at total precipitation. So this is a six day total precipitation as if everything fell as rain. And look at these heavy returns across the West Coast. There is potentially, what is that, seven to 10 inches of rain in the forecast at low elevations. Now, a lot of this is gonna end up being snow because we're going to push the rain snow line to much lower elevation. So over the high cascades, the volcanoes, that's gonna end up as a lot of snow. Same for Idaho, Montana, and the Tetons. And yes, some of this will dive down at times into Northern Utah across the Wasatch and potentially at times across the central and Northern mountains of Colorado. I just don't know how deep it's gonna go in those areas. Um, let's look at the same, no, let's go 10 to one snow ratio here. So deep purple is at least six inches. Um, bright pink is at least a foot and the whites, that's at least two feet. And there are a lot of areas that go at least two feet up here. You can see these bright whites coming out. Uh, BC, interior BC, Pacific Northwest, Idaho, Montana, uh, and also the Tetons and the Wind Rivers. And then look down here over the Southern Sierra 
you know, I've been saying this the last couple of days, I really think what you see there is only over the highest peaks of the High Sierra, and I'm guessing that's over 10,000 feet um, in, in the Sierra. I don't think we're going to see nearly that much below 10,000 because you're really on the cusp of this. Let's look at the southwest vantage point. Total precipitation over the next six days. Um, there it is, eventually spilling into the, uh, the High Sierra, Utah, Colorado. But southern Utah, southern Colorado, New Mexico, Arizona, nothing. A big old X in those locations. Um, let me show you my forecast. So here are my official numbers through the close of business on 1222. Um, let's start in California. So through this period, probably four to eight inches at the ski areas above 10,000 feet, you can see some of the pink, so probably a foot uh, or more at some of those uh, very high elevation areas above 10,000. So on this, deep purple is about six. Bright pink is at least a foot. The whites are well over two feet. In Colorado and Utah, I mean, this, this pattern just barely makes it in here. So 4 to 12 inches, Snow Basin, Powder Mountain, less up in Park City, Deer Valley, um, but potentially 8 to 12 up there, little and big Cottonwood Canyons. In Colorado, it's all I-70 north, 4 to 10 inches. The pattern just doesn't make it very deep into Colorado, and really looking good here. A couple of feet up in the Tetons, Jackson Hole Grand Targhee looking good in Montana with 8 to 16, um, 10 to 20 inches up here in Idaho, and great numbers to interior BC and Alberta. Potentially, I don't know, what is that, one to two feet of accumulation? Banff down to Red Mountain, White, uh, well that's Whitefish, Montana, but Fernie and Revelstoke, Marmot Basin, and of course still holding on to big numbers here in the Pacific Northwest with two to five feet of accumulation. I mean, once we bring down the rain snow line, we're in good shape. We start to accumulate significantly. So that runs us through the 22nd. I had a little fun with this. Let's look at Christmas. Look at that. So that's 1223 through 1225. Let me take you back and we'll see the contrast. So through 1222, and then this is 1223 through 1225. What do we got? Okay, so Colder air comes in and the numbers start to tick up in the Sierra. I like seeing that. Um, not much in Colorado. A little bit of additional in Utah. Uh, looking at a lot of sixes and eights up here through Wyoming, Montana, and Idaho. Looking at good numbers in the heart of the Pacific Northwest and also interior BC. So you get, a, you get an idea. This is way out there but you get an idea of how things might be trending here, 1223 into Christmas. Let's go up to the Northeast. Got to look at this. 10 to 1 snow ratio, 6 day total snow, and looking at some deep purples up here. So that's at least 6 inches of storm snow. And a bit of lake effect off Ontario, a touch off of uh, Erie and Michigan. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there's at least 6, maybe up to 10 in some of those ski areas. Let me show you my forecast. Through 1222, I've got 8 to 10 Stowe, J. Peak, Mount Washington, Whiteface, and Snow Ridge. The issue here I was noticing is there's a storm that comes in that might end up being partially rain at the base area. So it could cut into some of the numbers, um, but you can see they definitely drop off as you go into southern Vermont, southern New Hampshire. Nothing in Massachusetts. That runs us through the 22nd. All right, guys, let's end on the big western view here. So again, 16th through the 22nd, there are the numbers, uh, and then the 23rd through the 25th. So there is absolutely hope in this forecast for the west with at least a few storms and colder air. Guys, thanks for tuning in here. Always appreciate it. Take care and have a great day.